Happy holidays. I'm Bill Fricks, president of Newport News Shipbuilding. On behalf of all the shipbuilders at Newport News, I'd like to wish you and your families a joyous holiday season. This year's Navy Christmas is about life aboard the USS Eisenhower, one of the ships we've been proud to build at Newport News. Sponsoring this show is one way we can say thanks to all the men and women in the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. You do a great job. Hello, I'm Lori Dewey, Norfolk Market Manager for Taco Bell. Here at Taco Bell, we realize the importance of family get-togethers during the holidays. However, such gatherings are not always possible for the men and women in the United States Navy. That's why Taco Bell is a proud supporter of the ninth annual Navy Christmas Special, which recognizes the brave men and women who serve in the United States Navy. By giving of themselves, they remind us of what the true spirit of Christmas is really about. From all of us here at Taco Bell, have a Merry Christmas and a joyous New Year. Hi, I'm Frank Dosey, President of Home Quarters Warehouse. Christmas is a time of year to give thanks, and we want to express our gratitude to the military for protecting us and making the world a safer place. With that protection comes many personal sacrifices, holidays apart, missing the birth or graduation of a child, as well as many other momentous events. We realize that many families will be separated this holiday season because of assignments abroad. All we can do is to try to bring them closer. This television special is our way of helping to bring loved ones together during this celebrated season. We at Home Quarters recognize and have never forgotten the great support we've received from the military and their families. As a Hampton Roads-based company with 61 stores, we are thankful that we can give back to an area that has served us so well. We could not have done this without you. We want to thank you and your families for making this holiday a safe one for all of us. Smokey the Bear because when Jeff was little he grew up with his Smokey the Bear and his old one is in rags so Devin and I are sending him a new one so he can cuddle up with us while he's away. And, um, and we're out, we also ran out of oh, I'll do that. Oh. Y'all still got him a flannel shirt for those code nights that I can't be there to keep him warm. <laughs> This year, the families of VAW 126 are among the many separated over the holidays. Well, this is James. He's 16 months old. He's a spitting image of his father. I'm updating our music, and I hope that this time he likes it better than the last cruise when I sent him music. He didn't like it that much because he said it was too romantic, and that's not good on the ship. <laughs> I got you a Christmas shirt so you can wear it when you go to church. Hit it. On uh, Christmas. For some, it's a first time. For others, it's yet another time. For all, it's a long time of year. It's miserable. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the bottom line. Um, our children are 14 and 10 this year, and we've missed five Christmases out of seven. This is our eighth cruise. So. We've done this a lot. It's not a lot of fun. I bought a few things for him. I got him some reindeer corn. This is probably left over from Halloween, but they color it for Christmas. <laughs> uh, I got him a book to read, because I'm sure he's gone through everything on the ship after four years on the Eisenhower. Wrapping and sending gifts are symbols of the season, but for Navy families apart this time of year, they'd rather send themselves. Merry Christmas from the hangar bay of the carrier Eisenhower in the Arabian Gulf. I'm Joe Flanagan. Once again this holiday season, thousands of Hampton Road sailors are on long and lonely holiday deployments, far from home and far from their families. In the next hour, we'll try to bring them a little bit closer to home, if only for a moment. But out here, even a moment can go a long way when you're a long way from home. 
This marks the first time women are serving on a carrier on a six-month deployment. We'll meet some of them and ask how Mr. Mom's doing. The secret to surviving all this? Stateside support. Right, Cynthia? That's right, Joe. Without the love and support from family and friends, our local sailors and Marines would have a tough time getting through any deployment, much less a holiday cruise. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cynthia Lima, and thanks for joining us. This is the aircraft carrier USS George Washington. The George Washington has just returned from her first six-month deployment. But in order for the GW battle group to be home for Christmas, another battle group had to replace her. And that job fell to the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower battle group. It is the morning thousands of Navy families have dreaded for months. The day they'll have to say goodbye to their loved ones. A goodbye that will last six months. There'll be no Thanksgiving dinner together, no Christmas morning by the fire, no New Year's party with family and friends, and no Valentine's Day with husband, wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend. The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower is headed to sea, leaving behind the family and friends of more than 5,000 sailors. One by one this morning, crew members file past the gate on the pier, loaded down with their duffel bags. Families will pose for one last picture, and couples will hug and comfort one another. It doesn't matter how many times these families have been through this, it never gets easier. Just wanted to come back home. Can you prepare for this? No, I thought I could. It is especially hard for the children, some of whom are too young to understand why, but old enough to know this goodbye is for a long time. And as hard as it is for the families, it's just as hard for the sailors, too. What do you want her to know more than anything as she leaves today? That I love them, and I'll be back. As the Ike's anchor comes up from the muddy waters below, there are just a few precious moments left to shout, I love you, and wave goodbye. So much will happen in the next six months for this carrier and the family she leaves behind. Babies will be born, and news of pregnancies will travel thousands of miles. For the carrier, there'll be trips into the Persian Gulf and duty in the Med and Adriatic Seas. But the hardest part of all will be spending the holidays away from home. The air to tell you the news that uh, looks like we probably won't be pulling into port for Christmas this year. I'm not sure we're going to be. Now, don't think Santa forgets about the ships at sea. In the ready room of VAW 126, the E2 squadron made it clear they were glad to see him. What I brought were some gifts from home. Back home, Santa was given strict orders to deliver these goodies too like the ones from Lieutenant Chris Quigley's wife, Liz. Um, what I got you for Christmas, Chris, is these really couldn't fit in the boxes, but these are definitely going to be home when you come home, and you can put it in man's world in your garage. Yeah! Power tools! Well, honey, thanks a lot. Appreciate the gifts. Wish uh, I was going to be home for Christmas, but uh, I like the shirt, and I love the power tools, and uh, we'll spend next Christmas together. AT1 Jamie Reed got the pool table he's been waiting for, along with a wanted poster for his kids. Ken Blood Polk got a winning t-shirt, hoping for a winning lottery ticket. And then there was Roy, a crowd favorite and a no-nonsense cut to the chase kind of guy. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> he and two Kurt Schaus got a shirt, a Harley Davidson, and a blue blob. And what I told him was, when you sit and watch the blob blue, to complete its cycle through, evidently, there's not enough paperwork for you to do. That's okay. We can agree. Now your stress relief is free. Um, thanks, Sandy. Merry Christmas. Um, I love you. Uh, Merry Christmas to Natasha, Alicia, Nicole, Tabitha, Kurt Lynn, <laughs> Dad, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> 
Gordon Moore received a musical gift. And I got him something that's probably going to end up overboard because we're from Arkansas, and Arkansas was the NCAA champions last year, and this plays the fight song. <laughs> and the guys are probably going to get bored with it. Uh, thanks, Rihanna, for the gifts. Uh, hi, Blake. Aaron, sorry I can't be with you this year, but this is the last time we'll ever have to do this. See you when we get home. AE2 Jeff Ray's got his teddy bear to hug on those cold winter nights. This better be the only thing you're cuddling up with while you're gone. <laughs> All right, Neil Buko May. Neil May got some music too. A lot less romantic CDs than last time. Thank you, Christian. Joe Dog, Jennifer, and uh, to my livestock, Sam and uh, Cookie and Lucky. Uh, I miss you. I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jim Otis. Merry Christmas. Jim is the one with a look-alike 16-month-old son named James. Hi, Mayor. Thanks for the T-shirts. I can wear them well now. I want to keep using the same one. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Give a little buddy hug for me, and we'll see you in a few months. As usual, there were those gifts that warmed the heart and warm the seat. Commander Marty Church tried his on. Mary, it's uh, Christmas again, and I'm gone again, so what else is new? Uh, ben and Kate, I just want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Thanks a lot for the gifts, and I hope you have fun in New York. Merry Christmas. Then there was Tim Popeye Gray, who tried his on. And this is his name card. Popeye spinach. He's going to need it while he's gone. While Chris Donahue got creative with his. <laughs> I want to thank you, Valerie, for all the gifts. Really appreciate it. You have a happy... Uh, Christmas, so we'll see you in a couple of months. A gold necklace from Lucy Smith got rave reviews for Ira Smith. Thanks, Lisa, for the necklace, and sorry I'm not here this year, but I will be there next Christmas. Thank you. Doug Newhart got the gauges he wanted. The outlaw Josie Wales got the golf calendar he wanted. And the skipper got some news from home regarding a new kitten in the house. Um, cause mommy ran over the other one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would Dad say to that? Um, you finally caught her. <laughs> <laughs> but it was for better because she was real sick. So. It wasn't on purpose. And there are women at sea for the first time, and Santa loved it. Santa doesn't get to do this one. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. The new Navy, the new Navy. Oh, Lieutenant Chris Quigley had one more gift to open from Victoria's Secret. Oh, can't show that. Um, it's a little incentive, so you'll be thinking of me, and four more months after that, um, just keep going, and pretty soon we'll be able to open it and actually use it. Once the ready room reached a fever pitch, Santa knew he had done his job, and everyone was in the Christmas spirit. All right, that's it. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. For many Ike crew members, being deployed on a combat ship is nothing new. But for nearly 400 sailors, this cruise is not only their first aboard an aircraft carrier, but the one that will place them in the history books. And being new is frustrating. You learn a lot of things the hard way. Um, what's fun, everything is fun out here. As far as the flying, and uh, it's all exciting. For many of the younger female sailors, being part of a traditionally all-male ship is no big deal. The guys that we're working with are the guys that we actually went through flight school with. So we've all been trained together. You know, I, if anybody's having a harder time accepting the difference, I think it's the upper ranks. But the, you know, the other lieutenants and the lieutenant JGs and ensigns, we were all trained together. So, you know, if you raise kitty cats and puppies together, then they're going to get along just fine. And I mean, that's how I see it. To accommodate the women, the carrier underwent a mini overhaul in the shipyard. Well, this ship put an awful lot of time and effort into preparing for the women to come on board to ensure that, that, that there was adequate privacy, to ensure that everyone felt safe and secure and, and uh, uh, had a place to rest where they felt good and could uh, prepare for the next day. Lieutenant Commander Janet Marnane spent many years watching her now-retired Navy husband go to sea. 
This time, she's the one who packed up and left. Going is always easier than being left behind. Uh, not that either one of us have, have a choice, but the one being left behind just has to go back home to the empty house. But Janet's husband is good-natured about it all. He says that uh, if he'd known it was this easy being a Navy wife, he'd have done it years ago. <laughs> not all Mr. Moms are having an easy time of it. Here's how Sharon described how her family is doing. Okay, they're eating a lot of chicken, but they're doing okay. <laughs> For many women, being a part of this deployment means getting professional experience once denied them. And we're learning about combating situations where we never did have to learn about them before, but we're doing very well. These women are also learning what many deployment veterans have known for years, that an aircraft carrier never rests, which means her crew doesn't either. Frustrating is the hours. We work lots of hours out here. Uh, not a whole lot of sleep. Uh, fun thing about it is uh, just being here, you know, being out to sea and getting to go places that we would never be able to go. Ask most any sailor why he or she joined the Navy, and that's the kind of statement you'll hear, that the Navy is a chance to see the world. For years, gender kept most women from doing that. Now women are not only deploying for six months at a time, but they're able to compete for many of the same jobs as their male counterparts. That may not make being away from home for the holidays any easier, but it certainly is a source of pride for the women of USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. Dear Mom, hi, how are you? We're doing fine. In school, I'm doing great. I've got news on all my papers. I can't wait until Christmas. I wonder what I'm getting. Wish you were here. It isn't the same without you. In Boy Scouts, I've got more badges. We also made Christmas ornaments. I've kept busy by playing football with my friends. I also draw. The hamster and bird are doing fine. The bird is as mean as ever, and the hamster has gotten bigger. Dad's cooking is good. The last few nights, we've had pork chops and Bermuda fish chowder. The weather has been rainy and damp. How is the weather over there? We got the cards and presents you sent us. Did you get ours? Hope so. Well, that's all. Have a Merry Christmas. Love, Brian. It's never easy to be away from loved ones during the holidays. I was in the first grade when my father went away for the first time to Vietnam. We kept his picture underneath the Christmas tree, and we even set a place for him at Christmas dinner. But you can imagine how painful that was for my family. I remember my father telling me that going away was something he had to do, that it was part of the responsibilities of his job. Well, that's why the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower is gone for this holiday season. She is America's most visible weapon a floating city at sea with enough firepower to make good on any U.S. threat. Alone or with a battle group, the Navy's aircraft carrier gives America the big stick it needs as a superpower. It is, in fact, the fundamental duty of any sovereign state is to provide for the protection of the nation, and, uh, and we're in that business, the national security business. That business isn't always hostile. We're a presence. We're a, a huge force of... Uh, striking power from the sea. Uh, we, we work real closely uh, every chance we get with other navies and other services, other countries, uh, so that we, we hope to foster good relations with them. The mission is really that of peace through strength. The Eisenhower and her battle group expect to be sent to most any hotspot, 
be it the Middle East or Bosnia. Part of the battle group includes an ARG, an amphibious ready group. Comprised mostly of Marines, the NASA ARG left the battle group not long after it deployed to head to the Adriatic Sea. While we're here, we're, uh, we've got the mission, a humanitarian mission of search and rescue, and so our today-to-day -to -day operations are centered around preparing for that mission in case it uh, eventuates. That mission is called TRAP, for tactical recovery of aircraft personnel. This is an event that an aircraft, for example, is uh, the pilot has to bail out for mechanical reasons or other reasons, hostile reasons, and he has to bail out. We have the capability to go in and pick him up. But these Marines, more than 2,000 of them, could also be used to evacuate UN peacekeepers in Bosnia. Today's battle group deployments are much different than years past. Because of the uncertainty in the world today, uh, it is not possible to train to any specific eventuality or scenario as we were able to do uh, with such ease when it was the Soviet Union. That's why today's battle groups must be ready for any number of crises while still carrying out the one mission that will never change. Our primary mission here as a battle group is presence and deterrence. We really are here to try to create stability in the area, make sure that the people in the area know that there's a presence here and that we're ready to do things if we have to. Being away from home for the holidays is tough for everybody. Uh, I missed a lot of Christmases and Thanksgivings and other holidays away from my family when I was a little bit younger and spending most of my time at sea. But I think it was even harder on my family. And for all of you who are still in Norfolk and in the Tidewater area, while your loved one is at sea, I want you to know that, that he or she is thinking about you. I know that for sure because I was thinking about my family at that time. I was just out on the Eisenhower. I spent Thanksgiving Day there with them. And uh, one of the messages everybody said to send home was, say hi, tell them I love them. So I'm proud to be able to do that for you. As I look back on my career, uh, I think the biggest help I had was a wonderful family, a good wife and great children who supported me in all the difficult things I did. And I'm just really proud of all of you for doing that for your Navy member. They'll be home soon, and this Christmas will be over, and there'll be lots of other Christmases to look forward to. But you'll be proud of them, and they'll be proud of you. And your Navy and your country really appreciate your sacrifice. Thank you all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. God bless you. Heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. Peace on earth, good will to men. The top gator USS Nassau has been on the front lines of peace on earth, good will toward men. Off the coast of Bosnia in the Adriatic Sea, the Nassau has been standing by for search and rescue in support of the UN mission of Provide Promise. Whether it's a downed aircraft or evacuating UN peacekeepers, the Marines and ship's company are ready. The Gators on board Nassau like to call the square course they're sailing out here in the Adriatic the Gator Box. The daily routine of the ship on this particular day includes an underway replenishment better known as the unwrap. What a way to spend the holidays. This replenishment had it all. The oiler Kanawa, the cruiser Invincible, and the Nassau sailing along. Helos performing vertical replenishments, and a female first lieutenant in charge of the deck department. Well, in the deck department, we have about 15 people on station, but we also need the help of the other people on the ship to handle the lines at the beginning. So we get about 25 people per station uh, to help bring that fuel rig over. 500,000 gallons of diesel fuel marine and 150,000 gallons of JP-5 or jet fuel. 
While the deck department provides the muscle, the Norfolk-based HC-8 Det-7 Helicopter Squadron provides the air transfer support for the vertical replenishments. Normally in a squadron as ours, our primary mission is vertical replenishment, our secondary mission is SAR. But just so happens that recently we've, the H-46 has been tasked to take over the search and rescue uh, mission for the amphibs. That could entail a trap mission or tactical recovery of Air Force personnel or the evacuation of UN peacekeepers from war-torn Bosnia. Well, what we're doing out here, there's always a planning that goes on, you know, planning for uh, this trap, or planning for other things that may come along. We, ne we never know. Roger, reference 280, there's a couple contacts out in that area, but we can uh, get between here. Now, controlling the helos and other aircraft is the job of the air boss and the mini boss. Well, a typical day uh, usually starts somewhere around, uh, for right now, about 11 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll go somewhere to about 2200 at night. Work? work and more work. Well, I, it's always work, but uh, if you watch the uh, people on the flight deck, you can see all those kids hustling down there, and, uh, and uh, you got to be proud of them when you see them running up and down the flight deck for you. The Harriers, yeah, you really have to uh, watch the winds because uh, they are very susceptible to the winds and, uh, and uh, the deck motion. Uh, if we have calm seas, it's not too bad. If the deck starts to roll, it uh, gets exciting. Okay, if he makes a decision, is he going to point us towards a particular corner? I don't know. I'll find out later. Where do you read that target at? One thing is certain, the man in charge of all this thinks his troops are doing a terrific job. Oh, absolutely terrific. Uh, NASA is really the top gator in every respect. they got a bunch of true professionals, motivated young sailors and Marines, excited about the ship and excited about the job they're doing here in the Adriatic. Oh, and getting back to the unrep, how did the first lieutenant think it went today? I think it went very well. Uh, the people were well prepared and performed their job exceptionally, as they usually do here. But what was that music we heard as we pulled away? This is a Jimmy Buffett song. It's uh, the Volcano song. And one of the big lines is, I don't know where I'm going to go. And uh, it kind of answers our current situation here today. Some of the crew members have nicknamed it Grinch Station. Uh, but if you remember the Grinch story, it ends up happily. So we hope we'll be in port for Christmas. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Dear Princess, as I sit here tonight, enjoying another night at sea, I can't help but think about you and Jesse and all the happiness that you've brought into my life over the past three years. Just the thought of being able to hold you and play trucks in the yard with Jesse when I get home is enough to keep me smiling. I miss you and Jesse more than words can express, but I know you'll be waiting for me with open arms and hearts full of love when I get to the pier. Even though we won't be together this Christmas, remember that I love you and Jesse more than anything on earth and I can't wait to show both of you. With love, Prince Bobby, Daddy. P.S. Give Jesse lots of hugs and kisses from his dad. Give Jesse lots of hugs and kisses from his daddy. Mr. Patterson. Are they open now? Yeah. Obviously. Minor. Letters home and letters to ships at sea mean everything. And whenever mail arrives, it's drop everything and lend a hand to get it all sorted. Yeah, just put it down over there. This is all Eisenhower yeah. right here. Yeah. So, we'll work our way out. We'll start clipping banks, and then 
Somebody clip, somebody dump, and somebody sort, okay? Sheila Wooden from Norfolk was in charge here. Uh, right now, we just got 5,000 pounds of mail in from Bahrain. We're getting ready to break it down and separate it and send it out to each division. Uh, we have a lot of people up here trying to help us out. Uh, people that's just checking on board, rob a working party. A lot of people here trying to get all of it separated right now. What's fun and frustrating for Sheila? Frustrating is the hours. We work lots of hours out here. Uh, not a whole lot of sleep. Uh, fun thing about it is uh, just being here, you know, being out to sea and getting to go places that we would never be able to go. Now besides letters, videos can really bring a family together. Say hi. Say hi, Daddy. Say hi. Say, see how big I've gotten? Say, I almost can't fit in my outfit no more. No. Just about a week before Dean Humphreys deployed, his wife Dana gave birth to baby Cassie. Watching this video and reading the note along with it made his day. I want you to have a safe and happy holiday season. We all love you and miss you. I am keeping really busy, which is making the days go by fast. Cassie is being as sweet as an angel. Well, we love you with all our hearts. You take care of yourself and try to have some happy holidays. We'll miss you and we'll be thinking of you in our minds and our hearts. While it won't be the happiest of holidays for the men and women of the Eisenhower Battle Group, thousands of people around Hampton Roads have set out to make it a little brighter at least. We love you, just come home safe. Just leave it to the USO to put on a star-spangled holiday extravaganza to bring together family and friends of those deployed this season. The little ones got to sign Christmas cards. What are you writing to them right now? I love them. And sing Christmas carols on stage. And thanks to the USO, moms and kids were able to send videotaped Christmas greetings overseas. Miss Virginia Cullen Johnson was there. And so was Santa Claus, who arrived at the Naval Air Station in a most unusual way. I've never been to one of these shows, and, you know, it's nice to be uh, thought about. It's nice to have the USO around to remember. The Chuck E. Cheese in Virginia Beach served as the backdrop for the wives of the USS Nassau to spread some holiday cheer. There was enough pizza to feed the fleet and plenty of video games to keep the kids entertained. Sponsoring events like this is important to the family support groups in Hampton Roads. You know, we try to do our best to help the families and um, do whatever we can to, to lend moral support to them. Just being here with everybody else and, they, and we all in the same shoes and stuff and it helps. Yeah, it helps. Despite the fun they're having today, these kids know this Christmas will be different without mom or dad. Because you don't get to see them, and you want them to be there, and then when you wake up, you think they're there, and they're not. It's always hardest on the little ones. At Arrowhead Elementary School in Virginia Beach, the fourth graders joined voices with Carly Mooney to sing Christmas songs for the sailors aboard the USS Gunston Hall. But there was one very special song the children recorded. It's a song written by their music teacher for her brother, who served during Desert Storm. With the USS Gunston Hall being um, involved over in Bosnia right now, we thought it would be a nice time to revive it and, and send it out to them. The song is called Thinking of You.
Just down the hallway, other Arrowhead Elementary School students were busy coloring Christmas cards for the Gunston Hall, while still other children were busy videotaping their message. Hi, I'm Megan Willett, and I'm in Miss Sample's third grade class here at Arrowhead School. I just want to wish everyone on the Gunston Hall a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Here's a little, per a little pervy on your way. Bless our friends on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. It's been a busy time at Arrowhead Elementary, but the principal here says this is simply the school's way of saying thank you to a group of sailors who have always made time for them. They've been doing a lot of extra work with the kids here at school, especially the at-risk students. Mm -hmm. They come and tutor the kids, they come for special programs, and they've been away since ships have been in the Bosnian waters, and we really miss them, and we're very sorry they're away for the holidays. At Northside Middle School, the choir videotaped Christmas carols for the USS Ponce while the band played on. There was even a French flair to some of this year's caroling. While some students sang or played in the band, Others wrote letters to the Ponce sailors. Dear USS Ponce Sailor, I hope this letter finds you in good health. Dear USS Ponce Sailor, I'm sorry that you can't be with your family right now. Even some Hi, faculty Ponce. members at Northside Middle School sent Christmas Northside. cheer. Hi, how you guys doing? We've missed you so very much. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. They may be thousands of miles from Hampton Roads, but for the sailors, these children honor home is just a care package away. One of the traditions of the holidays is the classic holiday feast. That's one thing about Christmas not lost at sea. Now, you think you've got a lot of headaches preparing your holiday meal. How would you like to prepare one for 5,000? They are here on the Ike. Of course, it all starts with turkey. Have you ever seen so many? Christmas Eve may mean getting ready for Santa at your house, but out here, it's turkey prep time for the big meal. It's a little bit more than what we usually do. Um, it's kind of it's kind of fun preparing it. I mean, you get to cook all these turkeys and stuff. And make sure your meal comes out straight. White meat, dark meat, all kinds of turkey meat. I will be doing roughly about. Uh, 4,000 pounds of turkey, and um, that's going to be from feeding from roughly around 11 o'clock, and uh, we're going to be uh, progressively cooking this all the way until the early mornings because we have people working 24-hour shifts. And make no mistake about it, the boys in the bakery are loaded with dough. Uh, what's fun about it is getting the satisfaction of the crew uh, knowing that they're going to enjoy it, and what's frustrating about it is everything going on at one time, and it's a big cluster in here. And the oven space, you know, limited oven space, that's the biggest uh, problem with that. From the mess slingers on the line to the cooks in the kitchen, this is the busiest time of deployment for the food service division. I'm very busy during this time of the year. This is the holiday season, and we try to put a little bit more frills on uh, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis than we would uh, uh, during our normal working days. But um, I'm very busy. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm working probably uh, a 48-hour day in 24 hours. Here's what's on the Ike holiday menu this year. 560 roasted Tom turkeys, 225 baked Virginia hams, 150 big cans of whipped potatoes, 300 small cans of sweet potatoes, 300 gallons of giblet gravy, 360 pounds of cranberry sauce, 800 pounds of cornbread dressing, and 4,000 hot dinner rolls. Oh, and 600 gallons of eggnog. And for dessert, 225 pumpkin pies and 200 cherry cheesecakes. Whew. Normally it costs $4.75 to feed a sailor, 
but for the holiday meal, it's $5.75. Beautiful. S2 has done an outstanding job here preparing this meal. Uh, the young men and women uh, here in the galley have worked extra hard and done an outstanding job preparing this meal for the crew. Outstanding job, and uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to come down and help them serve the meal. <laughs> Now, the Marines and Ships Company on the Nassau will eat a little bit lighter, only because there aren't as many of them. 140 turkeys, 13 honey-baked hams, 36 gallons of giblet gravy, 1,300 pounds of baked potatoes, 430 dozen dinner rolls, 50 sheets of pecan pie, 50 sheets of apple pie, and 30 gallons of eggnog. Merry Christmas. Well, it was pretty good. I ate just about everything so far. I'm going to go back, try and get some seconds, and try and get some dessert. Oh, I ate just about everything twice over. It was very good. This far out, it's very special to us. It means a, it means a lot to see that they put this much effort into a meal for us. Uh, it's a nice meal. It's, it's very important. Uh, it does a lot for my morale. And I miss my wife, Pauline, my two kids, Ashley and Janine. I hope to see him soon. April's not that far away. The holiday meal is the focal point this weekend and reminds everyone of home. Hi, Mariah, Cedric, Chris, and Rika. I love you very much. Mary, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my wife, Lindy, and my kids, uh, Lajeda, Marlon, and Maurice. Merry Christmas, and uh, Dad misses you guys. Good evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish the families of our deployed uh, service members uh, the happiest of holidays and to let you know that during this season of giving that uh, your relatives and your friends and family who are away this Christmas are giving so that the freedoms of this world can be preserved and so the freedoms of your children and the children of the rest of the world will have a chance uh, for a future. It's, uh, it's that sacrifice that's a gift beyond any, uh, any other. I also want to say that because uh, you support your loved ones, it's your gift to give as well, and you do so willingly. And for that, I want to say thank you, and that our hearts, minds, and prayers are with you during this holiday period. God bless you. Uh, we uh, will pray for the safe return of your loved ones, and for you, and for the great gift you give. Thank you. Holidays at sea take on a spiritual element as shipmates gather to reflect on the true meaning of Christmas. I will be glad, yes, filled with joy because of you. Chaplains do their best to include all faiths in religious services. For the Jewish community, Rabbi Al Oberstein sees to it that the spiritual needs of his troops are well taken care of. Well, I have to tell you, I remind everybody on this ship and everywhere else that Hanukkah and Christmas have one thing in common. They're both the Festival of Lights. We caught up with Rabbi Al during a candlelight Hanukkah ceremony held in the library on board the USS Nassau. Well, I guess the most important thing about uh, Christmas and Hanukkah is uh, it's not the big presents that counts, but uh, it's the spiritual things that count. All over Nassau, you see sailors making the most of this holiday deployment, relaxing in their lounge area, thinking of home in their birthing area, Wherever they are, Rabbi Al has a good feeling about the heart and soul of his shipmates. We're proud to see our shipmates and work together. We're very tight. It's a family. And I think when the Bible talks about, especially in the book of Psalms, behold how pleasant and how good it is to dwell together in unity. Certainly we have that in mind on Hanukkah and Christmas. It is a season of lights, and faith at sea shines brightly during the holidays thanks to the commitment and dedication of the Hampton Roads sailors and the staff of chaplains showing the way. None more dedicated than rabbi and family man, Al Oberstein. So at this time of the year, I hope uh, all of us maybe next year will be with our families. But on the other hand, it will add more the Christmases and the Hanukkahs in the future. If you remember that, we were away uh, dedicating our lives for our country. I look to the front and who do I say? look to the front and who do I say? Captain Snyder is a leader of me. Everywhere we went, we saw men and women hard at work. Long days, long nights, long holiday deployment. Sailors who've been on holiday deployments before will tell you they don't get any easier. 
Some see it as a job. Some see it as a privilege. But all see it as a long, long way from home. With the carrier Eisenhower's 5,000 sailors, we're talking a small city at sea. And they're talking every chance they get to the folks back home. How's everything going? Yep. That's good to hear, thanks. Everyone, who else is there? From the youngest non-designated seaman to the senior enlisted, all thoughts are on Hampton Roads during this Christmas weekend. Well, they drift back home. They drift back home with the family. I miss my son. He's going to be 21 here in a couple days. And my daughter will be 19 in March. My other daughter will be uh, their teenager. So I kind of miss them. They're all working and going to school and having fun. Jody Myers is fairly new to all this. Working in the deck department on Ike, Jody misses her six-year-old son, Jeremy, and husband, Jake. But she tells us Mr. Mom is doing fine on the home front. Um, he told me last night in a letter, you know, he's taking care of everything, the bills. I have no worries at all. Babies are born, birthdays come and go, and anniversaries are missed. Uh, it's always tough, I think, Joe, when you're away for the holidays. Uh, it's part of the business. It's, we understand it, we appreciate it, but it's always hard. If you break it down to the number of hours the young kids on the flight deck put in for the amount of money they earn, you begin to understand that this voluntary commitment doesn't have much to do with a paycheck or a nine to five job. Well, out here it's more uh, nine to one thirty or two in the morning, I found. Um, uh, but it's not like you can go home and uh, eat dinner with the, with the husband and you know have a glass of wine and, and talk about it either. So. Um, I marvel when I get up on the flight deck and I see those kids running around and I, I look at them and say, God, this is just so neat. Being part of the Navy for the time that I have, you know, I, I, I'm uh, proud to be an American. And I'm proud to serve in the United States Navy and I'm just, I'm not overjoyed to be here at this particular time, but if this is where I have to be to support that freedom that we enjoy, then so be it. I can't speak for anyone other than, than me and, and some of the other female chiefs that I know very well, but. I was raised by a, 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 an ex-Marine, so uh, you know I, I was brought up to believe that there's not anything more honorable to do than serve your country. We have a lot of patriotism, we feel a, a love for the country, and we know we're doing something that's very worthwhile, and it makes, it makes dealing with it much easier. We heard it time and time again, far from home, sacrificing family separation this year so someone else wouldn't have to and ever so eager to let loved ones know all is well this holiday season during these silent nights at sea.
I hope you enjoyed Navy Christmas. Please know that all of us at Newport News Shipbuilding are thinking of you during this special season. We know it's tough to be away from your families at any time, but especially during the holidays. We're all very grateful to you for your tireless efforts in protecting our country. From those of us who build ships to those of you who sail them, we wish you a safe return and a happy new year. God bless all of you. Taco Bell is proud once again to be a supporter of the ninth annual Navy Christmas Special. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you enjoyed the program as much as we did. For those of you watching tonight, we hope you have a wonderful holiday. And to all the military personnel spending the season away from home, we at Taco Bell wish you a Merry Christmas and a joyous New Year. Our HQ associates miss their loved ones serving away from home this holiday season. This is our special wish for all of you. Hi Randy, this is Jima. I wish you and all the guys on the Eisenhower a Merry Christmas, my family, and HQ does too. Sending holiday greetings to my nephew, Henry Brown, who's on the Eisenhower. We miss you and love you, and we wish you were here. Happy holidays. I want to say hi to my mama, this is Shannon Doerr. Tell her we love her, we miss her. We'll see you when she gets back. She says a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My husband Ryan's on the USS Eisenhower, and I'd like to wish him a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. To the Hawking brothers from your cousin William, we love you, we miss you. Have a Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year. Peace.